guys, so today's video I want to talk about um, overeating and I actually got super emotional right before filming this because I just know so much how big of an issue this is for a lot of people and for maybe you coming to this video I know that it might be you just might be in a place where you just feel hopeless it's not just like oh I ate a little too much you know it's it's a it's a constant daily struggle and it feels like an uphill battle that might never be able to be won I've been there and I know that I can tell you all these tips and I can share everything that I've learned um, and I'm so excited to do that but I know that People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I, I know how big of a struggle this was for me personally. For many years, I struggled with not just overeating, but with binge eating disorder. And so, and I know that those are kind of, you know, obviously when you binge, you overeat. But binging was, it was a disorder. It was literally an eating disorder that I had fallen into. And, um, and I just know what it's like to feel like there's literally no light at the end of the tunnel. Like, I was probably the biggest skeptic out there. Like, I truly thought there was no possible way for me to ever be healed and, like, have a normal relationship with food. I literally thought, that's fine for everyone else. Everyone else can live a normal, healthy, happy life. And I will just always be stuck in obsessing about food and trying not to obsess about food and then obsessing more and then trying not to restrict but feeling that's the, my only option and I can't control my food portion so the only way to fix that is by controlling my portions and I just want you to know that I believe that there's hope for you too because there I felt hopeless and there was hope for me even on my most hopeless night, that's actually when everything turned around for me. There's not like, oh, here's the answer to your problem. No, it's it's not linear. It's not just like, okay, just do this and then you'll get, here, here just follow these steps and then you'll get to the light at the end of the tunnel. It's like, no, here's, here's like my journey and then you're gonna fall about three million times and you're just gonna, I just wanna encourage you to keep getting back up. I can't tell you how many times I felt like I literally had just failed at everything that I was trying to newly implement and practice. And I just feel like I failed about a thousand times, honestly. You can get out of this and you don't have to be enslaved to your old way of living. You can change your life right now. Now, okay, so the first thing I think is probably the biggest problem is, at least for me and what I found was a big massive problem that started this whole thing was dieting. It was feeling like I had to control every bite of food that went in my mouth, that I had to monitor every calorie that I consumed, and that I wasn't able to live and enjoy food guilt-free and by just learning when I'm full and learning when I'm hungry. It was no longer listening to my body signals, but a piece of paper or even just this mentality in my mind that said, you can't do this, you need to do this. And if you do anything that goes against what this little rule sheet is, then you failed and you're not healthy and you pretty much messed up your whole day and you might as well just give up because you suck and you can't eat healthy and you can't control your food quantities and you give in to temptation and you're basically a terrible person because you can't have any sort of control over what you eat because every time you try to get control, you lose control and now you're out of control and now you feel deprived and you feel just that, what's the point of even trying to eat healthy? And let me tell you, I have been there. Diets for me were a security blanket. It was a way for me to feel in control of my life because if I could control what I was eating and what I was consuming, then I could control how I looked and how I looked dictate how I felt. And so when you can release the control over, I need to look a certain way so that I can feel a certain way, or I need to have the scale say a certain number so I can feel good about myself, when you can literally like crucify that and you can say that's not going to make me happy and reject the lie that you have believed for so long, that I believe for so long, that if I just look like this, then I'm gonna be happy, then I'm gonna be satisfied, then I'm gonna have joy, then I'm gonna be able to buy clothes and feel confident and feel comfortable and just like myself. I, all I wanted to do was like myself and prove to other people and prove to myself that I can lose weight and I can look a certain way. Why? Because all I wanted to do was have faith in myself, that I wasn't gonna lie to myself 
from saying, oh, I, I want to lose this certain amount of weight so that I can be happy. And when I couldn't do that, then I lost trust in myself. And then I really disliked myself even more. And then it made me not only hate my body, but it made me like hate myself because I couldn't even set out to do one simple thing that I wanted to do was just simply lose weight so that I could feel better. The problem was is that that's not going to deep down make me like myself or definitely even love myself. What I really deep down wanted was just peace. Like I just wanted to have peace with my body and not worry and obsess about my food. That's what I deep down wanted but I just didn't know it. What I thought I wanted was to look in the mirror and finally feel like I had arrived and now here I am, destination happiness and I'm good to go for the rest of my life because now I have a perfect body. And that's just not how it works. The sad thing is, is that I believed that lie for so many years and I know that as much as we don't want to say that we believe that lie, a lot of us do believe that lie. That's when it came to this idea of I'm no longer going to live under this diet mentality. So rejecting the diet culture that we live in, rejecting the diet mentality. I'll never forget the day that I was like, I'm done. I'm done dieting. I drove to the coffee bean and tea leaf and I got a pineapple coconut muffin that I had been thinking about for weeks because I'm now no longer dieting and I'm no longer living under, I can't have sugar and carbs. And I went down there and I got that muffin and I ate every single bite and it was delicious. The number one thing is to not fall into a diet is going to make me achieve my dreams and then I'll be satisfied and happy. That's just not true. We can all fall victim to that lie and we can all live in a way that is serving that lie and it serves the belief system that that will satisfy you. And what really is freeing is, is saying, no, that's not gonna satisfy me. That's not going to make me happy. So I refuse to fall victim into the lie by, by doing the things that that diet tells me to do because that's what it comes down to it's our actions because our belief systems they it, it, our belief systems literally become what what we do how we think about ourselves becomes what we do with ourselves and with our time and our body and what foods we eat and what we choose to believe about ourselves becomes what happens and so if i believe that i'm ugly and worthless and that i'll never be happy until the mirror you know says that i'm beautiful then that I'm going to serve this diet until I achieve the results. But if I say, no, that's actually never gonna make me feel happy, then I'm, what happens now I'm at peace. I've been free all along and I've actually been at peace all along, but I just didn't walk in that truth. Does that make sense? That's why there's hope for today because you can literally walk forward and you can move forward in a new direction today just like I went and drove and got that muffin why because I I'm now no longer doing what the diet told me to do because now wait a minute I don't need that to make me I don't need to believe that anymore so now I'm gonna walk in freedom and I'm gonna do a new path no matter how many times I trip that's the other thing we believe we believe well if I mess up if I stop dieting and then I overeat well then I just have to go back to dieting because I, I can't be controlled around food. That's not true. The, the reality is with anything that we set out to do, anything in life, we're gonna trip, we're gonna have problems, we're gonna make mistakes, and that's normal. That's what we call imperfect progress. That's how progress is made. Just like a little kid doesn't get on a bike and then just you know become a, a BMX rider, the, the day they start riding, they fall, they get scrapes. Does that mean they're never gonna be able to ride a bike? No, it means that they're learning. And we don't get mad at a five-year-old for not being able to just get on the bike and ride right away, but yet we get so frustrated with ourselves. At least I found that I got frustrated with myself for, you know, overeating after I had given up dieting, and yet I just wish I could go back and I learned, and, and that's the thing, I, I I learned. I learned it's okay, I am gonna mess up, and I'm gonna mess up a thousand times, but I'm gonna keep getting up, and I'm gonna keep riding, and I'm gonna keep, and all of a sudden you get the hang of it, because that's what happens when we never give up and we keep going. So reject the diet mentality, no matter how many times you might fail and fall or feel like a failure, just keep going and move in a direction of freedom, and I'm not going to be enslaved to following a perfect diet or any sort of diet at all. Moving in from that, the next tip is to honor your hunger. So we've given up dieting, we're no longer gonna live that way, and now we need to really, truly honor the hunger system that God gave us, which is 
I'm feeling hungry right now and I am feeling full right now. I'm feeling satisfied and learning to honor both those feelings of hungry and full, satiated and starving. For many years, again, I was listening to a diet tell me you can only eat this many calories, you can't eat past this certain time, you can't have this sort of food past this certain time. There was all these rules and I was never actually listening to my body because now I'm listening to this map. When God has given us an internal roadmap to actually listen, it, it will literally show us perfectly how to fuel our bodies when we just listen to our bodies. And so the simplest way to listen to your body is, am I hungry right now? Because if I'm following a diet that tells me I can only have this amount of serving size for breakfast, but then I eat it and I'm still hungry, I need to honor that my body is telling me, hey, I need a little bit more food or a lot of bit more food or whatever that looks like and then feed my body and, and, and respond to my body talking to me before it starts yelling at me because what happens when we don't listen to our bodies and we say, I just ate and I'm still hungry but I'm not gonna feed myself, then what happens is we, we get more hungry and then now you're super, super ravenous and you're very, very hungry and now you, all all moderation has just totally gone out the window. Now we're going to overeat. Now we're now we've lost control essentially. We we didn't listen to our body talking to us. Now it's yelling at us and saying, "Now I'm hungry." And then that's when your body goes into almost this primal like state of "Feed me now." And 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 binging and binge eating disorder. That's it, it's like it's I don't know. There's so many thoughts that I have right now, but but that's when the whole overeating and the obsession with food starts when we deprive ourselves of our body just saying, hey, I'm hungry, I need some food. So eating to the point of I'm satisfied, I'm full, and then stopping when we're satisfied is, is such a simple concept, but for many years, I didn't do it. And so, and it's very, it's very life-giving when we can just simply honor our hunger levels that God has literally wired into our bodies when our stomach growls, that is a gift from God. And for many years, I just thought it was an annoyance and I was frustrated that I was hungry. And that makes, that breaks my heart now that I even like look, but that was a reality for me. Okay, so that moves me into the next tip, which is give yourself permission to eat. Stop with all the rules of I can't have this and I can't have that. Just give yourself the permission because when you give yourself permission to eat, you remove the deprivation. And when you remove the deprivation, it typically removes the obsession with food because when you're not feeling deprived, you're not really thinking about it as much. And that's why, again, I, I went and drove and I got that muffin because now I have permission to eat that muffin and I'm not obsessing about it. I just ate it and I satisfied my permission to eat that food, if you will. And so what happens when we say, no, I can't have this, no. It's like you tell, oh my gosh, I used to babysit so much when I was younger and I would tell my little nephew, no, or my little cousin or whoever I was watching. It's like, no, don't put your hand on the hot stove. And now all they want to do is put their hand on the hot stove. And when we put up these barriers and say, no, 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 that's all we want to do. All we want to do is eat that food. All we want to do is eat dessert. And we say, no, I'm never going to eat dessert ever, 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 ever again. I'm never going to have a cookie again. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that I actually believed. And it's not funny. It was really a real thing. And I would tell myself, I'm never going to eat sugar again. I'm never going to eat a cookie again. So I might as well eat as many cookies as I can now because I'm never going to do it again. And then what happens? Now I eat 15 cookies instead of just enjoying two cookies. And now I have a stomach ache and now I've lost control. I've overeaten. And then I don't trust myself around food. And I feel like a failure and I feel out of control. And I feel like my desires rule me instead of me ruling over my desires and then this is where the problem just perpetuates so when we just simply give ourselves permission to eat we really solve a lot of issues and the issue is just not feeling deprived and not putting ourselves and locking ourselves in a jail cell that we never have to lock ourselves in any way we have the key so just open the door give yourself the, the open permission to eat and enjoy your food and not feel guilty. A question that I would ask myself as I was relearning how to listen to my body and listen to the signals that my body was giving me of being hungry and full, specifically we're gonna look at being full. I remember I would ask myself, do I need or want, interchangeable, do I need or want to take another bite of food right now? 
am I satisfied? If I take another bite, am I gonna push myself into that, oh, okay, now I'm a little uncomfortably full. And that's not about restricting yourself. This is about getting in touch with your body's natural, again, God given the gift of being hungry and full and saying, oh, I'm actually full. Being able to just recognize that. This is not about saying, no, I can't eat anymore. And let me just really also say this again, this is not about diet. This is not about restriction. This is not about saying, oh, I can never ever, you know, eat a little too much just because I like the way something tastes. That's not what I'm saying. I, I just had no idea. I was so out of touch with my body that that, that that question really, really helped me was for me to say, you know what? I can eat however much I want right now. So with that freedom and with that permission, do I wanna save some of this for later? What's my body saying and how can I respond to my body in a way that honors my hunger, that honors uh, you know, just my body. That that was a really simple question that really helped me out a lot and really, again, gave me the permission to eat, the permission to enjoy the food that I was eating, however much that I wanted, but I don't wanna feel uncomfortable. I don't wanna feel overstuffed. I don't wanna feel like it's Thanksgiving every single day of the year, and I felt like that for many years, and so I wanted to just be able to eat in a way that oh, that was so good and I ate enough, but oh, I don't feel sick, you know what I mean? Because I, I can eat that, I have permission, so I can either save it for later, or you know what, I'm actually really satisfied, I don't want anymore. So again, now that leads me into my next tip, which is to just be kind to yourself. And there will be days, again, like we talked about, that you trip, just like when you learn how to ride a bike. And there are weeks, and there are maybe even months where you're going through something and you're just like, I just want some ice cream. like. That's normal, that's human. And you just want like a yummy piece of like warm apple pie with some vanilla ice cream. You know, being able to like enjoy the gift of food. God gave us taste buds. You can't just stop eating because it's a problem for us. We need to eat. And so that's where the problem lies is, is learning to um, have self-control. And deep down, that's really all we want. We want to not feel out of control around food and out of control with our body. And we just want to be able to say, I'm so free that I can eat that or I can say no. And I have self-control. You can have that. I didn't think I could have it for so long, but you can when we're kind to ourselves and we say, it is okay for me to be sad and then want ice cream but also realizing that ice cream is not gonna solve the emotional problems that we're having. Not being afraid to say, I need help, you know, going to someone saying, I really just need a listening ear, or I really would like somebody to talk to about this, or I really need to see a counselor, or, I really need somebody to pray for me right now, or really just like whatever it is, crying out to God saying, God, I need your help. We, we can't expect for food to be a solution to any of the emotional problems that we're having. And so when we run to it and we look to it as a coping mechanism, that's that's what it is. That's what we have to recognize that it is, is a coping mechanism. And food or anything else is never going to be able to respond to our emotional needs. We're emotional people. We need our connection with God and we need our connection with people. And that's where we find that life. That's where we find the where we were literally wired for community and we were wired to reach out and say, I need help. We can't solve all of our problems all on our own. At least I can't. And um and we can't look to things that are never able to provide those solutions. Okay, sorry about that. My memory card filled up. So I got a sip of my matcha latte and we changed the memory card and we're back in action. Now the last tip I have is kind of cool because I'm gonna be pretty vulnerable with you and I'm gonna be sharing with you specific things that my body has told me, if you will, over the years and how I've learned in responding to what my body is telling me. And so this is really cool because this is where it gets super personal for you. And that is to respect your health. So your body's health. And this is one of those things that only you learn learn about yourself. My body is totally different than your body. And what works for me, it might not work for you. So with that being said, I'm gonna tell you three ways that I have learned to listen to very specific things that my body has told me. And the first one being is I don't consistently for long periods of time on a daily and weekly and monthly and lifelong basis 
work out at a high intensity level for every single day. I used to do workouts that were an hour. I used to work out basically for an hour to two hours a day and I my adrenals were just shot. I was exhausted. I was hungry all the time. I could never figure out why. I was never able to get full. So for me personally, I have learned that shorter duration of exercise keeps me having more energy than I had before. It doesn't make me feel exhausted. It doesn't tax my adrenal glands because I've had thyroid problems. I used to have hypothyroidism or I should say that I've regulated my uh, thyroid. That's a whole separate issue. But anyway, these are things that literally are personal my body. Not everyone has hypothyroidism. Not everyone has adrenal gland problems. This is where this is not like personal advice to you. Um, this is just me sharing like what works for my body in hopes that maybe these ideas will help you listen to your body in a way that your body is telling you, you know what I'm saying? And this is how it relates to eating and our bodies. When we exercise more, your body's going to ask of you, hey, I need more energy, I need more food. And so when we expend, and we're gonna use that word energy here, I'm going to expend energy, I'm going to work out, I'm going to burn calories, that's where we're, we are using energy, okay? So now I'm done exercising and now I need to replenish that energy, I need those, I need food, I need to balance out what I've just spent and now I need to put back into the bank. Do you know what I'm saying? My metaphor is getting too off here. We need to level out the playing field here, okay? If I go for a one mile jog, it's not gonna have the same, you know, metabolic demand that going for a half marathon would create. Does that make sense? And so I realized from my doctor's advice, he told me, Cambria, you can't, you can't work out like you're working out anymore. Um, that's not what I would recommend for you after looking over all your tests and hearing what you're saying and I just really would like you to keep your exercises to 30 minutes or less and don't do super 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 high intensity at least for right now. Give your adrenal glands a break, give your body a rest and guess what? I found wow I'm not as hungry throughout the day and I'm not saying that being hungry is a bad thing. I hope at this point in the video you can really see that I am the biggest advocate of listening to your body, feeding your body properly. I'm just saying for me, in, in a realistic world, I don't wanna be hungry all day long, 24 seven. I literally could not keep up with myself. And that's the thing is that like, exercising for two hours a day wasn't realistic for me. But again, I was doing that because I thought I'd get a perfect body and then I'd be happy. So that being said, doing shorter workouts that they still can be at a higher intensity, just not at the most high intensity possible, but still in a way that challenges my body, that gets me stronger, that makes me feel sweaty, like I got a good workout, but it is something that's helpful. It, it's something to keep in mind that if you exercise for a very long period of time at a very high intensity, your body is going to be more hungry. And that's something I, I'm being honest, I never thought about that before. That I never figured out, I'm like, why am I hungry? all day long, why can I never be satisfied? It's because I was just, I was expending so much energy and my body was saying, hey, I need more energy. So I'm hungry. <laughs> this next tip, I listened to my own advice and I did not start this when I first learned about it. And again, this was under supervision of my doctor. I learned about intermittent fasting. This is something that I will say that I regularly practice even today because it benefits my body, it makes me feel good, makes me have energy, and my doctor, uh, he suggested intermittent fasting might be helpful for you, and basically the whole idea is that you're just giving your digestive system a break. It's not about restricting food, it's not about under eating, it's not about anything to do with any sort of eating disorder at all. I would never promote anything like that. I had an eating disorder, this is something very near and dear to my heart, I am not saying in any way, shape, or form to not eat. Even the whole idea of breakfast is break fast. You're breaking your fast, why? Because you've been sleeping all night and you haven't been eating. Just like when you wake up in the morning, you're slightly dehydrated because you've been, you haven't been drinking water for like eight, nine hours or six to seven, however long you're sleeping for. You know, to look at fasting in a negative aspect, for me, I did it in a long, for a long time because I thought, well, that's just another eating disorder, you know, trick of the trap, whatever. And it's not, it's, it's really not, it, especially if you're using it in, in the right way, in a way that is beneficial. When I learned about fasting, intermittent fasting years ago, I knew it wasn't right for me at this time, okay? So I didn't do it because I knew it wouldn't be helpful or beneficial it would, even though it probably would have really helped my digestive system at the time, I knew that mentally I wasn't in the right place yet, and then I progressed, 
And again, we fall off our bike and then we get back up and we learn to ride a little better and a little easier and a little further. And now, hey, I can ride a bike. And now, hey, I have a healthy relationship with my body and food again. And so this has helped me to heal my gut, heal my digestive issues. And it's honestly helped me to regulate my hunger in a, in a way that works for my body. So I give my body a break and I allow my body to just chill out for the morning. And I usually eat, like this morning, I ate around 10.30, sometimes I ate around 11 or 11.30. I usually don't ever eat after 11.30 because then then there's just then that's that doesn't work for my body but um, and I don't give myself rules on the fasting either um, I can make a whole separate video on intermittent fasting there's like a lot of things that I could talk about so let me know if you want to see that but again um, this is just another umbrella tip under the idea of learning to listen to your health needs in your body and again that is, is so personal so that's that's really helped me because it helps me to not feel super super hungry throughout the day there's nothing wrong with feeling super super hungry that's just your body saying hey I'm hungry but again there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I, I need some help regulating my hunger that's not anything to do with an eating disorder or dieting mentality it's just it's just learning to listen and respond to your body in a, in a positive, good way, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. I want to make that clear. So when I give my digestive system a rest, it can perform optimally. I feel better. I have more energy. I have more mental clarity. And I'm able to regulate my hunger in a way that honors my body, that makes me feel good, and that I can eat until I'm full and satisfied and not feel ravenous throughout the day. The last thing is to have satiating meals. So this this idea is, is the very practical, simple, fun little tips part of this video and again listen to your own body but maybe if you're just waking up and having a piece of toast and then you find why am I hungry an hour later have a more balanced wholesome breakfast have a more balanced wholesome snack um, I find that when I wake up and I have eggs and avocado and veggies or if I have a smoothie and I throw some chia seeds in there or healthy fats with some full fat coconut milk or I have some protein powder in there which is going to give me some more you know energy and I just find that when I am able to create more you know satiating meals with protein carbohydrates healthy fats um, sugars all these things that our bodies need and want and crave and we don't just limit it to one thing um, I find for me I'm so much more satisfied when I add chia seeds in my water I have a matcha latte I poured some coke or what's it called uh, brain octane oil by bulletproof in there I added a, a tablespoon of that into my matcha latte and now what now it's a little bit more of just than just a matcha latte I get some healthy fats in there and I'm getting a little bit of like brain boost and I just don't feel as it's, it's satiating to my body and um, it really holds me until lunch. I guess the very last tip then would be to keep a food journal. And this is something that I did for a period of time. I don't do this anymore. It's not about, again, monitoring and every single bite of food that you put into your mouth. It's about getting re in touch with your body. And that's actually how I learned what my body thrives off of, how I have the most energy throughout the day. I noticed specific things about my personal body that when I had a high sugar breakfast, I would feel really, really tired. I didn't have a lot of energy. Or when I would eat, maybe not as much healthy fats during breakfast I felt way more hungry before lunch I felt like I couldn't even make it to lunch so I learned things about my body that said hey this is what makes my body feel good have energy and thrive and that's what we want that's what we all want to do we want to be able to have energy feel good and not feel sick not have our stomachs hurt not feel all the way hungry through all the day long and all the way hungry through all the day long we're just getting to the point in the video where I can't even make any sense I really suggest it for you just keep a food journal for a week or try a couple weeks or maybe even a month and you can look at certain things and you can say you know what actually my stomach really hurt after I ate this certain food and or man I don't really have as much energy when I eat that specific breakfast or it really will give you insights that nothing else can that no video can that no book can um, it's only the things that your body will tell you personally so with all that being said I really hope that you found this video helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up I really love you so much. Let me know any questions that you have or any videos that you want me to make. Don't have to do it alone. You can ask for help. You can pray. You can ask other people. You can ask me. And you can definitely ask God. And I love you so much. You're so, so, so loved. And there's hope. There's something good. 
on the horizon. There's something not just good, but beautiful on the horizon. And I just wish I could give you a hug. And um, I'm gonna finish drinking my matcha latte now and I'm gonna go eat some lunch. <laughs> so that's how we're gonna end this video and I will see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>